know, when I was growing up, I was very, very curious. I was deeply interested in any and everything. One of the things that I did was I used to live in the library. I read two to four books a day. I just wasn't interested in a lot of the stuff that other kids were interested in. To a point, I would go out and I had friends and I would play, but I really enjoyed reading. I thoroughly enjoyed the pursuit of knowledge, getting new knowledge, gaining new knowledge, and learning more about my world and learning more about any and everything and this habit set me apart from my peers a lot of the kids they were not interested in reading I mean when I was coming up one of the things they would have would be reading challenges they would have a situation where you could you know during the summer when you were out of school you would read a list of books and you get little awards and stars and little gifts for reading certain books and that that was deeply interesting to me and that was fun and I, I kind of look back at how I grew up because I had a, a strange by middle class upbringing and what that I mean I didn't we didn't have the money because I grew up in a house that did not have indoor plumbing we had an outhouse that you had to go out the back door, down the steps, through the garden to use the outhouse. And I remember when I was about seven or we had a bathroom installed. And I remember when they came and they dug up the yard and they put in the septic tank and the ran the lines and everything. And then we had an indoor plumbing and we had a water heater and all this other stuff installed. So that happened pretty early, but my earliest memories of like waking up in the middle of the night, having to go out, you know, back then, Alabama had seasons, four distinct seasons. It's just changed so much since then. Um, but the, 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 the it, it was funny because we didn't have money. My grandmother had a college degree and my grandmother was a teacher. My grandmother taught me to read before I went to school. And later on in life, it took me becoming an adult and probably in my 30s to realize what a blessing, what a gift, what a significant impact that was because I have some learning disabilities. I, I had a speech impediment and I'm dyslexic. And because she taught me to read before I went to school, I never got behind. And matter of fact, if I didn't have these learning disabilities, I probably would have graduated two, three years early. But I would read to confront my disability because the more that I read, the more books that I consumed, my reading was easy it was something that I had to consistently practice because if I read every day then I would not have a lot of issues but this led me to be very inquisitive to ask a lot of questions I remember when I asked Reverend Prescott hey Reverend Prescott why aren't there dinosaurs in the bonus in the Bible and Reverend Prescott said, boy don't you be questioning God you be questioning God don't question the word of God and that's all he had to say to me and later on I found out that in the Bible the Levitons were the dinosaurs so they were in the Bible and as I went on this journey of learning I went on this journey of consuming information it set me up for what I do right now because I consume a ton of information between blogs, Facebook, Instagram, podcasts, reading. I'm always consuming information. And it's just a lifelong habit to consume information, which 
it makes it real easy to combat the haters and the dissenters and the trolls in the comments because literally I can destroy whatever argument they put up because it's bullshit literally in minutes a few minutes just a few google searches because once again I don't know everything but I know enough about a lot of things which gives me a starting point, a reference point on how to search and how to find things and how to get up into an informational space because I'm a really good researcher. And this is why, you know, when I was doing these uh, live streams, which I'll talk about in a minute, why I'm not doing the live streams on this channel, that's why I was able to come up with so many accurate prediction, predictions because I was going off of the data. I wasn't just like thinking about what I wanted to be. I was looking at the data from a raw and naked perspective. And this enabled me to come up with an analysis profile and come up with a prediction. Let's take the stimulus talk, uh, stimulus check. I mean, just reading the, the political tea leaves, I was able to come up with those predictions, and I so far I've been spot on. And there may not be a second stimulus check. That's you know, because once again, and one of the reasons that I'm not doing the live streams is I'm trying to reset this YouTube channel. And when you consistently do live streams, you send the wrong information to the YouTube algorithm. So I've really eased up because uh, tonight I'm going to do a live stream on Savage Finance. and I, I, It's going to be well put together, more constructive. It's going to have an agenda. And, you know, this will be the second live stream for Savage Finance. But I feel it's going to go well because once again, I am running, you know, a YouTube network. I have the dominant male and that's how I designed it. The dominant male, not the and. I have Life on the Tube, and I have Savage Finance, and I have Hustlers Kung Fu, and I have the Mindset Coach. So I'm building my own YouTube network show with creative programming and stuff because I'm really excited because I feel that YouTube is going to grow for the next 10 years. So I've got another 10 years to really dig in and make my mark on YouTube because Savage Finance is growing outside the purview of this channel. Uh, Savage Finance will get between 40 to 120 subscribers per day. And literally this channel, I don't think this channel's got 300 subscribers this month. So Savage Finance will get more subscribers in two to three days then this channel will get in the month. And that, that's really pivotal for YouTube growth and creating stuff and setting it up. So what I'm getting ready to do, because this, this you know, I'm telling you why, what my nature is. And when I tell you guys to start businesses based upon your strengths, this is what I'm talking about. Because the YouTube business, the online course business, all that caters to a strong desire in me in my curious nature, in my inquisitive nature about finding information and dealing with the truth. And that's why I always tell you guys the truth. You may not like it, but you know that you can trust what I say because I don't lie, I don't make up stuff, I don't sugarcoat it because like this whole thing with these stimulus check, uh, the, the genre of stimulus check videos, I had to think long and hard because I knew it was going to grow. I mean, I literally, I would see channels literally grow overnight before doing these stimulus check videos because one of the things, and you know, I'm somewhat disconnected from the general populace. I don't have a normal lifestyle. I don't really do stuff because I was actually doing my financial statement this morning and I was just like, I only live on like 7% of my income seven sometimes you know depending upon the month i may live on two to three percent of my income and that's just not the norm you know you're not dealing with 
a lot of people who are living like that and who have a financial profile like that. So this influences my thinking. This influences the things I tell you. But I know intellectually that 99% of the people who are listening to these videos, they, their lives are nothing like that. They don't have that kind of thing going on. They're not making that kind of bread. And, you know, that creates a disconnect between me and the general populace because I don't have that normal lifestyle that so many people have. Like, uh, I was just going through, right now, we're, we're, we have a lot of people who are on the verge of being evicted. And eviction is such a nasty, nasty thing. Um, we have people who literally or lost their job strike one got evicted strike two ended up homeless strike three this is what's going on in our country right now and i don't know anything about that you know it, it's not my life it's not my purview it's not the life or purview of my friends and this is what creates this social disconnect because it makes it a little challenging for me to identify with quote unquote the common man because I'm not the common man I don't have a common life I don't live a common life I'm bringing you information from the CEO suite the CEO level and I've been here for a minute because one of the things that it, it makes challenging is dating because, you know, you, you run across women and you can run across women who want to use you for your money or you can run across someone who is honest, hardworking. And my lifestyle just literally blows, <laughs> blows their minds. Cause like my current girlfriend, I went for an errand and I wouldn't test drove this car. And then I'm, I went ahead and put a deposit on the car. And she's like, who just goes out and spends $90,000 for a car for I'm going on the air? And I was like, I do. This is my life. And, you know, it was just kind of hard for her to understand because she's a normal person with a normal life of, you know, it, it's just the things that I do. Because literally I have several bank accounts with more money in them than the average person makes in a year. Because, you know, I'm right now, I'm rearranging my corporate structure. I'm shifting money around. I'm writing checks to myself. I'm going to start actually paying myself about 10000 a month. Because, you know, I, I got to do things a little differently now. And, you know, she's just sitting there watching this stuff. And her mind is blown because literally, you know, she's never been around anyone like me. And I think this is a challenge for any dude who is a high value male with a generous income because most 99% of the room he's going to run into are going to kind of struggle with some of the stuff that dudes like me do. I mean, you know, I was thinking about uh, getting this watch. But I'm really addicted to this Apple Watch, so I didn't get the watch. But the watch was like $40,000. I was about to go ahead and scoop that bad boy up. And then, you know, I thought about it. It's like, are you going to wear it? Because I don't believe in spending money on stuff that I'm, you know, because I wear this Apple Watch every day because it gives me so much feedback. And that's why I did not buy the, the you know, the $40,000 watch. Because I'm pretty much, I know that I'm not going to wear it. So that's going to, that would create some interesting commentary. So what I'm saying is, you know, if you want to start a business, you got to know who you are and create that business in alignment with your strengths. One of the reasons that I'm successful is I thoroughly enjoy what I do. I thoroughly enjoy the creative process. I thoroughly enjoy um, all the stuff that I do that because this is what makes my business like, you know, I'm now a creative director because I got to do programming for five channels. And now I also have an editing team that's editing about nine, eight 
to nine, eight to 10 videos a week. So I have to go ahead and create the content and upload it in their system so they can edit it. But from doing YouTube, editing is one of the most time consuming processes of video creation. So this has really freed me up because I they don't edit videos for this channel. They edit videos for Savage Finance, Life on the Tube, and they're probably gonna start editing videos for the Mindset Coach because it, it makes a difference. But once again, the content, the topic makes a difference. So we're going to be talking about that as you know, on Life in the Tube, because I'm gonna be talking about the process because that's where you can be really successful on YouTube by understanding and getting to know the process and understanding how the process intersects with YouTube success because that is a pivotal, pivotal part of the YouTube game of strategy, of putting together because you know this time next year my expectation is i'll be doing 25 to 35,000 a month just with adsense just with the adsense not including course sales and one of the reasons i want to do that is that will be at 35,000 a month that will be five times what i spend on my lifestyle and then I can move it up to 10,000 because like what I like to do is take money out of my corporation, put it in my personal account to handle my personal bills. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do a video talking about the deployment of capital and cash. And also since uh, I'm getting ready to do something that, you know, is, is kind of extraordinary. Because, you know, I don't ever see, because all I see on YouTube is people talking about getting into the real estate game, getting into the real estate game with no cash, um, no credit. And I've kind of figured out a way through my holding company strategy where I can go ahead and create income in one company, deploy that income through the holding company system and circle it back to my real estate company and pay virtually no taxes on that money legally. You know, that is, you know, I, I mean, I'm patting myself on the back, but that's brilliant. Did I, I mean, literally, the way that I've just set this up, because I set up the holding company and I've included the articles because I'm, I'm, du I'm duking it out with the state of Georgia on this second operating company. Because I got to create this one, and I got to create another one, and I got to create another one. And, you know, I'm just sitting there, like, literally, with the setup, with the corporate structure that I have put together, I could make $10 million and only pay taxes on maybe a mil. I mean... You know, I'm really excited at what the future holds and the plans that I have because, you know, I don't have no debt. Well, no personal debt. I got a little corporate debt, but I'm literally paying them back with their own money. So essentially, I don't really have no debt. And I'm in the position to really grow, to really do some things differently because I have so many plans for Savage Finance and the way that I'm going to drop it for you guys. Savage Finance, there, there's gonna be a whole new slew of videos. I mean, I'm, I'm really, really excited. And you know, I told you this part about me being a little curious boy because this is one of the driving forces of the creative process for what I do because one of the things that you guys have to understand, I did a video years ago, it's on this channel, it was a creator and producer. And when you become a creator and a producer, you literally change your life. You, you change the whole game, you change up everything. And one of the things that I want to convey to you guys is to do more principle because this is what I've learned. 
when I started my first successful business, I had a job. And that business made about $250,000. That was side money. So I know if you're properly aligned in the proper situation, you can make a gang of money if you're properly aligned. If everything is the way that it needs to be, you can make crazy amount of money. You can set yourself up so nicely. You could create revenue streams. I mean, it's just a matter of knowing who you are and tapping into your inner secret power. Because once you tap into your inner secret power, you are unstoppable. I just told you that I came up with a plan that would allow my corporation to make 10, I mean, let's let's just swing for the fences. Let's say I made $50 million. I would not pay taxes on 50 million. I would pay taxes on about five and invest the other 45 million back into the company and get richer and get $45 million for fast assets. I mean, once you understand corporate law, corporate culture, the corporate game, it is staggering what you can do. It is staggering what you, the income streams you, you can create. And this is why I'm going to get into it because I've got some burners coming up for Savage Finance talking about the corporate game, corporate reduction a strategy of taxes. And all this is legal. This is what Apple does. This is what Amazon does. This is what all the big boys do. And they go ahead and deploy their money back into the company. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing what you can do. So this is some of the stuff that we're going to talk about. Just give you a little background about who I was, how I grew up, and how I got here. Because I've been able to figure out how I got here. I've been able to put together all of the pieces and have a greater understanding of myself in the process and then relay that to you in a manner that is, you know, palatable and understandable and easy to digest. So that's what we're gonna do. That's all I got for you guys. So be sure to go below and get the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success. Go ahead and get that. And get 30 days to 2,500. Go ahead and get that. And so you can start developing some of these income streams. And so you can start learning that corporate game. So you can set yourself up for a fantastic future. So go below, get that. And I will see you guys in the next video.